Okay, so over the last month or two, uh, especially over the last two weeks, we have been studying uh, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And we've kind of uh, uh, locked in on this one story or this one uh, chapter due to the fact this chapter does not match the rest of the book of Romans. Um, Paul, up until this time, has been telling us we are free from sin we are free from the bondages of sin. We are now right with God. We have a new relationship with God. He's telling us all the blessings that we have in store for being connected to Christ. But out of nowhere in Romans chapter 7, Paul says, we are free from sin, but I'm still struggling with sin. Now, out of nowhere, Paul says, I'm a wretched individual because I want to do good, but evil keeps showing up. So last week, we kind of discussed the idea that if you are not a struggling Christian, it might mean you're not in a relationship with God. Okay, this is a review. So if you were here last week, you're supposed to say amen when I say what I said. Last. So let's, let's try to do it again. Uh, last week, we talked about that if you're not struggling, it might mean you have gotten comfortable sinning. Now, if you weren't here last week, don't lie and say amen. All right. So, so the struggle is real. Y'all remember that? That just because I come to church does not mean that I am perfect. In fact, the person you sitting next to look good, but they jacked up from the flow up. Because we all got some issues. Amen. And that's why you shouldn't mind coming to church because nobody in here is acting like they got it together. We are trying to get straight. And we look better than we really are. So last week we kind of looked at the idea that all of us have issues, but we are recovering from our issues by trying to listen to the correct voice. Y'all remember that? So, so everybody has these voices in you uh, and, and you're trying to figure out which one to listen to uh, and some of them uh, say do the right thing. The other one said do what you want to do. And you kind of have to work on which voice you're going to listen to. So this Sunday, uh, we're taking the same text out of Romans chapter 7 and trying to dig in it a little deeper uh, to see what stage in life each one of us find ourselves in. So I want to read just a few verses out of Romans chapter 7, starting at verse number 22. If you'll stand with me for the reading of God's word. Romans chapter 7, verse number 22. Look what the Bible says. This is Paul talking about his struggles with real life. Paul said, I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another, there's another power within me that as, is at war with my mind. Okay, I'm going to take my time. Paul says, I love God, but there's an internal battle going on in my mind that makes me struggle doing God, what God wants me to do. He says, this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. He says, oh, what a miserable person I am. In the King James Version, it says, what a wretched person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ. Well, y'all a hard church. Okay, let me try it again. I can't do it by myself. And the only way I can be free from this sin, the answer, he, he gives you the equation in verses number 22 through 24, but he gives you the answer in verse number 25. The answer is in Jesus Christ. Y'all still not excited about it? So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm still a slave to sin. This morning, looking at part two 
of our, our theme for this month of crazy Christian, this morning we want to look at the idea, which one are you? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't said nothing the whole service. You didn't sing, you didn't pray, but this is your time to talk. Which one are you? If that neighbor wouldn't speak to you, I'll say you try to find a new neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, which one are you? This is the day the Lord has made. You ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Dear God, please help us as we study your word right now. Please forgive us of our sins. Help us to fight the battle of the war that's within us. Help to guide us and keep us. In your son's name we do pray and all who believe said amen. Please be seated with us. <laughs> Many of us went through shock this past Thursday at a meeting that took place in Frisco that only lasted for 22 minutes. It was a non-negotiable meeting between a football team and a star athlete. We all thought that he would walk in there and renegotiate his contract. He would stay a Dallas Cowboy. I know you don't know who I'm talking about because you probably were studying God's word. But for the rest of the real world, we were shocked to hear the news that Des Bryant is no longer a Dallas Cowboy football player. The shock was we had gotten used to that. We had gotten used to number 88 running up and down the sideline. I was shocked to hear the reason they did it was because they said that every time the opportunity comes, it is difficult to make a shift with something you have gotten accustomed to. Okay. They said it would have been very easy to just stay where we are, but sometimes to do better, you have to take a chance. I was kind of frustrated about it a little bit because the boy did catch the ball in Green Bay. Okay, y'all don't have to clap because y'all ain't clapped about Jesus all day, so don't clap about nothing else. <laughs> he did catch the ball, and we should have been in the Super Bowl. But sometimes you're so busy trying to catch your past, you can never see your future. Some of us are trying to recover what we lost instead of making a change to do better. But some of us, if we be honest, never step back. We look at an individual, but we never look at the whole picture. The one who's throwing him the football is different now. We don't have the same quarterback. Him and Tony Romo had a chemistry that Dak did not have. In fact, if you be honest and if you be wholly hushed about it, Dak actually played better before Dez came back from injury because he was not used to that new paradigm. And sometimes in our lives, we will stay stuck in a rut because it's too much work to try something better. We'll do the same thing, we have the same routine, we have the same habits, we, say we have the same proclivities because it is easier to stay a slave than to take a chance towards freedom. It's easier to not know than to be woke. It's easier to act ignorant than to find the information. It's easier to stay back and be surprised than being in the know and being informed. Sometimes in life, we rotate the same system because it takes too much work to shift. That's why we show up to church at the same time every Sunday. We don't care if we're late. We don't care if we, if we don't show up. We don't care. We have the same routine because changing your routine might force you to change. Some of us are scared of doing better. 
Some of us are scared of seeing what the gate looks like on the other side. Some of us are fearful of knowing that there is a better way. Some of us are fearful what will happen if I get healthy and stop eating bad. What will happen if my marriage works out? What will happen if I'm doing better in life? What will happen if I can answer the phone without checking the 1-800 number? That we have gotten so used to being stuck in nothing, our breath smells like it. Because when you talk, you talk out negativity. My marriage ain't gonna ever be better. I ain't gonna never get well. I speak my sickness instead of my reality. I speak my divorce instead of a happy marriage. I speak the doom over my children instead of saying they can do be better. So what we do is we stay in a natural state because staying natural makes it easy that everybody has to change but me. Okay, I'm going to preach it. Y'all don't have to say amen. Paul suggests to us in Romans chapter 7, that as we looked at it last week, Paul says, I have a struggle within myself because I want to do good, but evil is always there. He says, I'm more inclined to do evil than I am to do good. Paul suggests in these uh, 25 verses that every human has to deal with three natures. That Paul says that first of all, there is a natural person. Let me talk about this natural person for a second. This natural person is an interesting person. Because this natural person, it's easy to live this life. Let me tell you why it's easy to live the natural life. A natural person doesn't care about changing because they like where they are. Okay, let me give it to you another way. The natural person has five aspects that I want you to write down because I want you to answer the question, which category are you in? Because this natural person does what comes natural to them. There is no checks and balances. There is no, let me check myself. This person here, if they want to do it and it feels right doing it, they could care less what anybody else thinks about it because they do what pleases them. But I want you to catch what this person also does. This person lives an easy life because they don't have a struggle. Okay, let me, let me give it to you another way. This person does not struggle with sin because they don't believe there is sin. Because they are on the idea, is there really a God anyway? And if he is, I can't do nothing about my faith anyway. So I might as well do whatever I want to do so whatever I like and how I like it, I'm going to do it because there's only one voice talking to. Okay. Now, don't look at this person bad because it's people who come to church every Sunday who are stuck at natural. Just because you show up to church does not mean that you are spiritual. Some of us just finished doing what we wanted to do. But we just show up to church to mask what we have done so maybe God won't strike us down on Monday. So I want you to catch this. Here's the interesting thing about this person. First of all, there is no spiritual struggle. There is no checks and balances. There is no uh, checking myself before I wreck myself. It's me doing what I want to do. So it pleases me if I like it. It's instantaneous. I don't. There's no delayed satisfaction. That's why uh, natural people stay broke because they don't know how to save. That's why natural people have jacked up marriages because it's just about them. That's why natural people have jacked up children because they still kicking it instead of raising their kids because they want what ha makes them happy instead of what will make society a better place. So this natural person only listens to their own song. And here's the challenge with this natural person. Number four, lives life according to their rules and only listens to one voice. Now let me... Let me talk about this natural person for 
three minutes, and I'll let you go. The interesting thing about this natural person, everybody in here starts right here. And I don't care how much you go to church, it's a mind thing to move from here to a better you. Okay, you can come to church every Sunday and hear some great songs, hear some great preaching, but until you make up your mind to do better, you can show up and be the same you because it takes work to move from here to being better. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me I told the 8 o'clock service, I told, I told uh, the 8 o'clock service, it's unfortunate that my mother goes to this church. I would suggest, I've given her a few churches she ought to go to. So she won't have to hear my life stories on her money. But when I was in college, I remember I was going to church every Sunday, showing up to church every Sunday, and I, I, I did my best to get away from Aaron Day Sr. and Martha Day, went all the way to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I remember, I remember right after church, right after church, leaving church, going to the liquor store. Don't y'all grunt? Some of y'all, I seen y'all in line at Bear Creek. Come on, y'all gonna sit there and act like, uh, Pastor, you better, yeah, standing right there in the liquor store. And I was standing in line, and I remember like it was yesterday, me, Dr. Doolin, uh, <laughs> Sam, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a whole bunch of, he, he told me something real bad, he was watching us all night, stop mentioning my name, you know. <laughs> if you're going to confess your sins, do it by yourself. But he was standing in line. I was getting communion. They were getting. Okay, uh, I, you know, I was responsible for the wine. But anyway, I remember standing there because I was showing up to church, but I didn't come to change. Because, see, I thought God was pleased with me regardless of what I did. Because I thought salvation was in showing up Salvation wasn't in doing better. So what I did was I showed up so he wouldn't strike me, but my life manifested a natural way. And I remember standing in line and somebody walking up behind me and asked me, are you, I'm eight hours away from Dallas. And somebody, and I never thought about it then. I was too young, uh, too immature to understand. But now that I think about it, I was telling uh, Dr. Newton the story I was going to tell y'all. And he said, you know, we never thought about it. What was he doing in there? <laughs> if you know me from church, <laughs> it seemed like we should have been hiding each other. But he had gotten used to being natural. Okay, catch this now. See, if you are not having any problem with your life, with God, it might be because you have dummy God down to a standard that you can reach down against. See, we have dummy God down to, if I just show up to church, if I just watch online, if I just give once a month, if I just do this, if I just do good deeds, and we do this to board responsibility on us. But the Bible doesn't say show up to church. The Bible says live a holy and acceptable life. And that's not work just on Sunday. That's work every day. It takes work to move from natural to hearing a voice inside of you that you know is right, but you still want to do you. So Paul says, first of all, all of us start off, and Paul is suggesting to us out of Romans chapter 7 that he was here before Acts 9. Okay, let me, let me give it to you again. He was here before Acts 9. Acts 9, what he was doing was he was walking with paperwork to go kill Christians. And he said, that's naturally what I wanted to do. But when Jesus arrested me, it made me change from what is easy to starting to be something that's a strain. So Paul brings out that many of us have moved from natural to a place called carnal. Okay, let me, let me talk about carnal for a second. Because carnal people are different from natural people, but they are still connected at the hill. 
ghetto people are people who believe in Jesus Christ, but there is a struggle with sin still prevalent in their lives. So number one, carnal individuals, Paul says, out of verse 14 through 25, suggest to us, give it to me, it suggests to us that they are struggling with sin, but their nature is to listen to the right voice. Okay, they're going to pull it up for me here in a minute. So here it is. They are struggling with sin. It must have froze back there. They are struggling because they believe in Jesus Christ. But they still struggle with that sin nature. So here's the challenge. People who are carnal have a split personality because they are listening now to two voices. Okay. Let me tell you what the voices they're listening to. That's why I said it's easy just to be this one because he only, she only listens to one voice there. When you bring in Jesus Christ in your life, now you got a voice of wanting to do what's right, Paul said. But evil keeps showing up. Okay, let me give it to you again. That, that, that it was easier in my life when Paul was talking to Paul. But when Paul accepted Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God got into Paul, now when Paul makes decisions, I got two voices talking. Okay, okay. Now, if you don't have two voices talking to you, you might want to start at belief. If you're listening to two voices, God bless you, if you're listening to two voices, it's because each one of us have a split nature. Okay, boy, come, come, come. Okay, so, so I was at the, I was at the uh, phone dealership uh, the phone dealership, the phone company the other day, and they were asking me. I was telling them because it was taking them too long uh, to fix my phone, so I started preaching my sermon to them. I said, what y'all think about this? And you should have seen the three young folks behind, uh, yeah, you know, what you talking about, you know. And, and, but I asked them, they, a question came out, what is the voice that you talking about? And here's the problem, because we made the Holy Spirit so mystical and so supernatural that we don't hear the real stuff of the voice. Let me tell you what the voice is. It's not what Gary's on. Okay, let me tell you what it is. Have you ever thought about doing something wrong and nobody's called you, there's nobody in the car, but something inside of you says, don't. Okay. Boy, y'all super saints. Man, that's a hard church to preach at. Okay, let me try this out. Have you ever been by yourself and you want to cuss them out? And a voice says, okay, all right, all right, yeah, okay. Uh, boy, y'all so holy. Let me try these folks. Have, have you ever wanted to go over there and a voice says, okay, y'all going to sit there, y'all going to sit there. Have you ever been at work and they got a hundred Laptops in a room that they ain't touched for a year, and you in charge of inventory, and a voice says, Don't. Okay, that's the voice. And the voice says, Don't. But the flesh says, Go for it. Come here now, come here. That all of us are crazy. Because in each one of us, if we're trying to do right, there's always a voice saying, nobody's going to find out. You're going to be able to get away with this. You've done it before. After you do it, then you can. Yesterday, I was headed to a funeral. I was headed to a funeral and uh, in Ennis, Texas. And on the way to the funeral, I do as I traditionally do. It was going to be about a 25-minute drive. So I put in my navigation system, how to get to St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church in Ennis, Texas. And on my way there, 
I called some members who had been sick, some members who were in the hospital, and that's my traditional thing. Uh, I just call in between meetings or in between situations. So I was on my way to the funeral, and while on my way there, um, um, I started calling people. I knew how to get there from my house. Uh, I knew how to go 287, but I really needed the directions when I got into Ennis because I didn't know the church was kind of in a community, and I really needed to know how to get around and, and, and find my way. But right when I got to Ennis, I called my wife, or uh, she called me, and we started talking about something. And in the phone, my, the way my phone is set up, I sound like Kevin Hart, don't you? The way my phone is set up, that um, my phone is connected to my car. Y'all too. So don't act like I got something you don't. Pastor got a phone. Yeah, you got one too. So it connects to the car. So I could hear her talking and telling me which way to go. But I also heard my wife talking. And she was talking about stuff that we were going to do at the house. So when I got close to the area that I needed to go, I kept talking to my wife, even though my homegirl in the car was telling me to turn. In fact, I passed the street where I was supposed to go because I was listening to my wife talk and ignoring the directions of which way I needed to go. I actually drove out of Ennis into a little town on the south side of Ennis because I was listening to a familiar voice that that voice overrode the voice that I needed to listen to. Okay, don't, don't miss it, don't miss it. So what I had to do, what I had to do was I had to tell her, baby, I got to get off the phone because I'm lost. And people were looking at me crazy. I said, I got to hang up with you because there's a voice that's trying to get me where I need to go. Here it is for all of us. All of us got some voices that talk to us. But normally you listen to the voice that you have become most familiar with. And sometimes that's God and sometimes that's you. And if you listen to you or you listen to the bad you enough that even when the good you is talking, you will omit that voice because the voice you want to hear is offering what you really want. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so amazing about it? We have trouble with it because when we come to church, we only normally hear one voice because the other voice is just waiting for you to get back in the car. It's hard for us to understand because right now we just hear one voice, but the other voice is waiting for you to get back home. That voice ain't worried about you on Sunday, but it wants you later on. And the struggle becomes real because can I deny me to celebrate him? And most of us, if you be honest with yourself, is right here where this sister is. We want to do right, but the problem is we have not had a surgery yet to cut off our old nature so that we can walk in the newness of life because it's difficult to try to get here if you haven't had a spiritual circumcision. This is tough. This is tough. And it's quiet, but I'm talking to you anyway. The problem with me, not y'all, because I can tell by y'all not saying amen, y'all just waiting for Jesus to come. There have been moments in my life when I'm all of this. I know how to give you this on Sunday, but I also know how to give you this on Friday. And just so I don't look bad in front of my son, I can give you this anytime. So what happens to us is we've learned how to manipulate the voices to fit our scene. That's why we are so shocked when this is supposed to show up on Sunday and because somebody said in your place, this shows up. That's why when we see something at church that ain't holy, when you thought you were here, you actually, the real you come out because if you keep Carrying dead weight with you, dead weight will burden you. So Paul starts off Romans chapter 7, uh, verse number 1 through 5, saying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be spiritual. And this is difficult 
because spirituality is something that we are trying to become that we are not. Jesus says, they that worship me, worship us, worship me, must worship in spirit and in truth. This takes work. You know why? Because the spiritual person, God bless you, believes in Jesus. But the spirit of God controls this person. You know what that simply means? This person is not perfect. This person falls down. This person uh, uh, struggles with sin, has the same issue as the carnal person and the natural person. But this person doesn't make a decision until God is in the decision. So you know what this person does? This person don't get married until they pray. Because they recognize if I'm dating him, if I'm dating her, and they don't come to church, and they don't believe in God, I ain't that good that I'm going to make them come to Jesus. Okay. This, this person here actually don't, uh, don't worry more about what their children have on their feet as shoes. They worry about the God that they're putting in their children's hearts. This person here is concerned with things above while these people are worried about things that make me feel good now. And you know what's so amazing about this person? This person here actually gets everything this person wants, but they get it because God gave it. You missed it. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, uh, Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. It's just getting what you want, but the right person is giving it to you. It's actually you recognizing that for me to be spiritual is for me to wait for God to move instead of me moving on my own to please me. So look at number three. Here's what's the trip about this person. This person here, life reflects who controls them. Okay. This person here don't have to say, I've been bought with a price. You know why? Because their life reflects it. They don't have to go to work Monday with a Bible under their arm. Why? Because people can see their life and know that the Spirit is leading them. They, they, don't, have to, they don't have to go off on nobody. They, they can act like the boys who were mistreated at Starbucks the other day and walk out calmly because when you know you in the right, you ain't got to act a fool. It's when something is developing you and controlling you, you know for all things work out for the good of them who love God and called according to his purpose. This person here is not perfect, but they are working towards perfection because this person here has been this and has been this, so they know how to be all things because God is still working on it. But this is what I love about the spiritual person, I'll let you go. They are not perfect, but striving to do better. If you are here, don't go out in the world acting like you don't do no wrong. You wanna know why your children won't come to church? You know why your children, grandchildren won't show up to church? It's because you've been acting like you here when they actually know you here. Because you won't tell them when you made a mistake. And they know the family secrets that you still hide. <laughs> Here's the trouble. Here's the trouble. This life is as easy as this life now. Because this life, just like the natural person, is listening to one voice. And that's the voice of God. Now here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. How do I get that one voice in me? Well, unlike normal circumstances that we want God to do everything while we do nothing, the only way you can get here is the Bible says in the book of Luke that you got to study so that the Spirit will have something to remind you of. 
Okay. Because you can't go get your Bible when it's time to make a decision. You got to have a spirit with you so that you can bathe everything you do under God so that now you are not responsible for what God is. Years ago, when, when I first got married, <clears throat> we had to buy a car. And we went to this place. I, I can't remember the name of it. It was, I had a red Jeep Cherokee. And I remember that red Jeep Cherokee cost $438 a month. I couldn't afford $438 a month because I was only making $19,000 annually at Aetna U.S. Healthcare. So I went to almost four different dealerships. Three of them told me, you can't afford it. Okay. But I kept going until somebody said, you can get it. I kept omitting voices that were trying to help me until I heard a voice that I liked. Y'all tripping. Let me try them. Because they, they got a red Jeep Cherokee. That, that, I, that sometimes you can't blame God for stuff you didn't involve him in before you did it. Your marriage is jacked up not because God didn't give you the right man. It's because you didn't pray for him. Okay. Because every sign he shows now, he was showing why y'all were dating. But because y'all were having sex, you couldn't see his cray-cray because it was so good at night, you were blind during the day. Okay. Your, your financial situation is jacked up because your friends are trying to tell you that you got to buy more when they don't care about a savings because you keep allowing different voices to come in your atmosphere that's going to strain you because there's people around you who don't want to see you do better. And until you are able to break yourself from voices that are involuntary voices. Until you're able to break yourself from noise that is not valuing you. Until you're able to listen to one voice that's trying to hope you, you'll keep bringing God in after it's done instead of before it's done. God doesn't want to make your life hard. You are choosing some of that. Okay, y'all don't want to say amen with me. God, if every decision, maybe not y'all, but every decision I made on me that I did without God, I suffered for because God wasn't responsible for it. Because God ain't a come lately jack of trade. He wants to be first. And he says, if you put me first, all the rest of the stuff will be dealt with. This doesn't mean that you don't have to be involved, that, you, that I just pray and God works it out. No, it's you trying to please God. And in turn, a good father knows how to please his children. Y'all see that? So here's the question. Where are you? Right now, sitting in church, are all of these people sitting with you? If you go out to eat and you by yourself, do you need to get a seat for three? Because I got to sit in my natural side. I got to sit in my carnal side. I got to sit in my spiritual side. Or do you let your spiritual side go when church is over? Because it's easier to be this in this world than it is to be this. Somewhere along the way today, you got to know that you're no different than the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I'm a wretched individual because when I want to do good, evil keeps showing up. Why, Paul? Because I have not been able to kill what I used to be because what I used to be, I still kind of like. 
every day of my life and every day of your life, we got to work on ourselves. Because just because I'm saved doesn't mean that I don't have to do anything else. I got to work on Paul because what happens to Paul actually the better Paul gets, the better Blake ought to get. Listen to me. I just want to bring it down to a natural sense. That my life has improved because I've killed some natural thing because I didn't want Blake to see the natural damage. Okay. So some things I used to listen to on the radio, I don't do it anymore because if he gets shocked about it, I should get shocked about it. Okay. That there has to be a process in you that brings you to the point that you want to live a higher calling to bless those who come behind you. My wife and I drove all the way out to Greenville, Texas. To Greenville, Texas, Friday night, after working all day to watch him watch baseball. Some of y'all will catch that when you get to the house. But because we were there, and because he's in the sixth grade and he's on a seventh and eighth grade team, he doesn't get that much playing time. But the coach has been working with him and put him out there. And for the first time, the ball, those curve balls were killing him. Because when they would come right at you, he would jump into the other dugout but he done figured it out. He stood there and waited for that ball to break, and Blake, bam, hit that ball. And because we were there, guess what? He did. Couldn't make it to first base for looking at us. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody run to a base looking at their parents? You know, run to the base, fool. You know, you about, to, you about to get out looking at me. But you know what he was really just saying? Are you pleased? Y'all missed it. Don't you know you have a good father that when you make one good decision, you ought to be able to look at him and say, God, are you pleased? And when you can make him pleased over one thing, guess what? Then it becomes a habit, and eventually your fleshly voice will be so muted because your spiritual voice is what you have become used to hearing. But guess what? I can't do it for you for the hour and 15 minutes you hear on Sunday. For some of y'all, I can't do it for the 30 minutes you hear on Sunday. Come on, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, you can be mad at me all day. You ought to at least give God an hour and 15 minutes. You ought to show up if nothing else. Treat the church like you treat your job. And eventually you will hear that voice. It's another voice that's going to come that's going to say, well done, that good and faithful son. But you have to train your ear to hear the right voice. So this morning, we all struggle with sin. We can come to church and in the African-American experience, we, we have come every Sunday to holler to mass for private pain. In slavery, celebratory services had a purpose because when you've been beaten, mistreating all week, you wanted a place where you could let it go. And I think the church ought to be a place where you should be able to holler out, God, I need you. Lord, help me. Lord, I can be the real me because I know everybody in here has struggled. But after I finish hollering, I got to be quiet to myself and say, I got to make a change. Because what good is it to holler and then go out and recreate hell. I ought to holler and make a change in my life that people around me can see a different me. And even if they don't, I can be pleased with myself, knowing I'm pleasing God more than I'm pleasing my natural nature. Somebody this morning ought to turn their life over to Jesus Christ. You ought to start listening to the right voice. And here it is. Here, here are the five points I want to give you. Pull out your phone, pull out your tablet, pull out whatever you got. And I want you to write these down. These five points, these takeaways 
that's going to bless your life. We're having technical problems. Bam, there it is. God bless you. It was the Holy Spirit that put that up on the wall. We, look at this, we all have been in all three of these stages. So I can't judge the natural person because I've been there. Nor can I covet the spiritual person because I want to be there. So I have to celebrate wherever I am until I'm able to get where God wants me to be. But look at number two. If you're a natural person, if you find yourself in the natural position, your first thing ought to be is to just start believing. Because you can't hear the right voice if you don't start at belief. Paul says in Romans chapter 3, don't you know that we are right with God through faith in Jesus Christ? So I can't get that voice that I need to hear until I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Number three, you can change position. You don't have to stay here, nor do you have to stay here. You can get here if you keep working on you. Number four, listen to the right voice. And this is what I want to echo every week. Don't give up the struggle. Just because you've had a bad week, because you had a bad day, because you fall down, because you did what you shouldn't do, get back up. Because a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up again. Don't give up on the struggle. Amen. Let's pray right now. God bless you. God bless you. Did this help anybody? Amen. Amen. So take this with you as you go and let the Lord lead you. Let's pray right now and ask God to bless us as we continue to try to be faithful to the struggle we have in life. Let's pray. Father God, we love you today. Dear, help, dear God, we all start off as natural individuals, pleasing ourselves, but God, we want to please you. Help us to learn how to move from natural to carnal and prayerfully from carnal to spiritual. We all find our names in Romans chapter 7. We all find our names in the same place, this place of struggle, this place of issue. But let's not demonize our issues. Let's not demonize our struggle. Let's grow from it. Let's learn from it. And let us change position. We can be better as a people. We can be better as individuals. We can be better for the cause of Christ. Please help us right now to do better, to live better, and to be better. Because we serve an awesome God. Please forgive us of our sins. If there's somebody here that needs to put Christ on in baptism, if there's somebody here that wants to renew their walk with Jesus, if there's somebody here that's just trying to walk with God in a deeper, stronger way, please help them to listen to the right voice today and come to Jesus. Please forgive us of our sins. In your son's name we do pray. And all who believe said amen. Please stand with us right now and come to Jesus. God bless you, brother. God bless you, man. I see you. God bless you. Go receive him, Deacon. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Prayer time. God bless you, sister. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.